Okay, we're going to go over some of the Mastercam uh, fundamentals. We're using Mastercam X4. When you first pull it up, this is the screen you should get. And so we need to select the machine type. Under machine type, I'm going to use mill. And here are the various machine tools that we have out there, or um, machining centers, or CNC mills, whatever you want to call them. Um, I'm going to pick the IntelliTech. And this is what you call the operations manager. And this is where I can select my stock material or stock setup. I'm going to pick a um, make a five by five by one inch thick. So if I just type in five tab five tab and one tab, notice that my um, origin or place of reference is in the center. So if I click here, I'm going to be machining off the bottom left corner or programming from bottom left corner. Now I want to click on display and green check. Now if I take the roller on my mouse and roll it back toward me, I can center my material in the center of the screen. I'm going to go to create and click on rectangle. Now if I get close to the bottom left corner, watch what happens. It's going to snap right to it. Bam. There it is. I take the left roll uh, the left mouse button and hold it down and create a window larger than the red dotted line and click it one time. Now here is my width or my x axis and here's my height or my y axis. Let's type in five, tab over, five again, tab, blue apply, green check. Okay, what I want to do is I'm going to create a pocket. So the easiest way for me to do that, I want it to be um, three quarters of an inch away from all edges. So if I go to create, line, and parallel, right here I can type in 0.75. And if I click this button here, my distance button, it's going to turn it red. That locks me in. So now if I click this line and go to the inside, do it the same way all the way around. Blue apply, green check. Now I need to go ahead and trim off this excess here. So if I go to my scissors, and here's various options I have. I'm going to select this one, divide and delete. So once I click that, I'm going to zoom in with the roller. And you see the dotted lines here. If I, if I click here now, it goes away. There. Green check. Now notice I have right angles or square corners. So if I'm going to machine with the cutter, it's going to leave a radius. So I need to create a radius in these corners. You do that by going to Fillet Entities. If you ever hover over anything in Mastercam, it will tell you what it is or what it does for you. This one is called Fillet Entities. So if I click that, it defaults at a quarter of an inch. Well, I want these radiuses to be 3 inch radiuses. So if I click here and type in 0.375, I click this button here. Now if I click this line and I go to this line, it creates the radiuses for me. There. Blue apply, green check. All right. Now, I need to go to tool paths. I need to pick a tool to machine this pocket out. So if I go to tool paths, scroll down until I get to pocket, and I'm going to name this pocket. That's my operation. Now if I click this line, notice it turned it yellow. That means everything's connected. Green OK. And I need to pick a tool. Well, since that's a 3 h radius here, the largest cutter that I could possibly use would be a 3 quarters of an inch, or 0.75. So if I go to Select Library Tool, 
And here's my three-quarter flat. I'm going to double-click that. And it's showing tool number 241. Well, I don't have 241 tools in my um, carousel on the CNC machine, so I know that my three-quarter cutter is tool number 7. So if I double-click this, I can change that number. Notice that we have three-quarters of an inch here. So we're still using a three-quarter cutter, but I renamed it tool number 7. We go to Cut Parameters, showing that we're climb milling, which is what I want. We are roughing, and I can pick whatever style I want. The fastest um, way of machining a pocket would be to go to True Spiral. So if I click on that, and I go to Finishing, actual Entry Motion, here's Helix and Ramp. Helix is going to zigzag back and forth until it gets down to my depth of cut. Ramp goes two or three axes at the same time simultaneously. As the Z is coming down, it's moving also in my X and my Y or one of the other. Finishing is going to leave one pass and it's going to save me 10 thousands worth of material for cleanup. I can change that if I want to. I can uh, change that to 50 thousands or two passes at, at 25 or whatever. Lead in, lead out. It, what that means is as the tool is coming in, it leads in, it machines all the way around your pocket, and it leads out, goes down another hundred thousand or whatever you want to take it, leads in, goes around, and leads back out. I'm not going to use that, so I'm going to uncheck it. It grays everything out now. Depth of cuts. I'm going to click that until I want to go one hundred thousand per cut. 0.1, or I can give it more zeros if I want to. That's not going to change the value of that number. I'm not going to break through. I want to leave a pocket in there, so I, that's not even going to be an option. Linking parameters, that's going to give me my total depth. Okay, we said that that's going to be one inch thick. I'm going to machine this um, three quarters of an inch deep. So that's going to be minus 0.75. If I want to turn some coolant on, I can go ahead and click on coolant and click on flood and turn that on. Well, everything's done. Let's go ahead and blue apply, green check. Here's my tool path. A lot of times that gets in your way, so you can get rid of that or hide it, I should say, and you can do that by hitting Alt-T on your keyboard. One time shows me my where it's going to start and machine around. One more time, we'll hide it. Let's go to an isometric view. If I hit Alt F1, that's 100% zoomed in. I'm going to back off of it 25% by hitting Alt F2. Now here, I can hit my verification and machine. If I hit right mouse, I can go to dynamic rotation take a look at it, make sure I didn't break through or zoom in and look at my radiuses, see what kind of finish I'm leaving. Everything looks good, so I'm going to hit green OK. And back to my isometric view, and let's go ahead and generate code. So if I hit G1, green check, it's going to want to save it under an NC file. I can save it there, or I can save it to my desktop, or I can save it to a flash drive, or whatever I want. I can do that by going here. Here's a USB. Um, I'm just going to save it under my documents. Actually, I think I'll just go ahead and leave it in NC and hit save. Now here's the code. Starting off with G90, Absolute Programming, it is uh, got various other codes that we will discuss later. Your G80, your G40, and uh, G54, tool offsets, things of that nature. Scroll all the way down. M2 ends the program. Everything looks good. I'm just going to minimize this and 
we will continue with another video after this one. Thanks for watching.